So welcome to the next part of building my big frag tank. You can see that the water has cleared up in the tank and the rock structure really looks awesome. I am very pleased with it. You can see there's a number of uh, holes in there that will accept coral frag plugs so I won't have to be dealing as much with um, uh, snails and crabs knocking corals over. Um, it will also allow for better placement and more strategic placement of the various corals. Today's episode is I want to install the um, Neptune Apex system which will be an extension of the version that's on the tank inside the house. What I plan on doing is allowing that to control water top off, uh, water changes. I also want it to be able to control the lights as well as monitor the temperature, turn the chiller or the um, uh, fans on for cooling the system. But I have two issues that I need to deal with first. One, I've already resolved, and the second, I need to deal with um, as a result of some mistake that I made yesterday. So the first mistake that I made was not having enough support on the uh, 2x4 top of the stand. Uh, there's about an 8 foot span here and I had no support in the center and the problem that it caused was there was about a quarter inch gap between the uh, plastic frame of the aquarium and the stand itself more towards the middle. Uh, in the long run that would create a potential stress point for uh, the uh, glass aquarium and we didn't want to have to deal with that. So the solution was the addition of some additional posts. Uh, you can see there's one there in the back uh, and one here in the front. I haven't painted them yet. Uh, they were cut to the right length and basically hammered into place. Now the frustrating part was I had a second one a little further down here and it was just a hair bit higher so that when I went to put the second one in the first one was too tall and it just the second one didn't work. And so in the process of removing the first one, I was banging away on the 2x4 um, uh, the, the and I guess all of the movement had caused enough vibration that I heard a big splash and turns out that the Radeon light that I had hanging above the tank, which was a real nice light, apparently was not uh, secured to its gooseneck uh, clamp well and it fell into the water. Uh, obviously electronics, especially today's electronics, LED such, don't do well when they're exposed to water or submersed in water and so that light, an expensive mistake on my part. Uh, the frustrating thing is it just seems to me that I've been jinxed with the uh, entire Ecotech line. Everything seems to have to be tethered. Uh, even the little um, Vortec pump here on the side has to be tethered because at one point, without tethering it, the motor fell off, hit the ground, and cracked the motor portion. Now all of a sudden my gooseneck clamp that was here, uh, the light wasn't secured or tethered, and it slipped off and fell into the aquarium. So bit of an expensive lesson on my part and uh, no one ever said learning the aquarium hobby was a cheap effort. Uh, I've now got a reef breeders light that is suspended above the top of the tank. Uh, we've got the uh, radion light being sent in. We're going to see if maybe they can repair it as opposed to uh, trying to buy a new one which I probably won't. Um, the other thing that I spent yesterday doing was running guess you'd be able to see it over here, um, was running PVC pipe with some tubing inside of it um, up along the garage here, all the way over there, and then out to the water container. And what this will do is provide the water source for the automatic top-off for the filter system over here 
as well as this little frag tank here. Uh, I've placed a fan on this tank, which really does cool it down, but unfortunately it has a pretty, pretty significant effect on the um, evaporation. So we're going to hook up some uh, automatic top-off to that system, as well as down here for this system. And so this PVC pipe here has been run, and I've been able to slide um, what I thought was some semi-rigid uh, tubing inside there and I run that all the way over to where the water containers are on the other side. Unfortunately, I came out this morning and I heard a noise over here which at first I wasn't too concerned with because I thought, oh okay, the automatic top-off system here, which is that little liter meter, uh, is running and it's filling the tank inside the house. But what I noticed was that the uh, line, let me see if I can get it in the camera here, right. the line wasn't sucking any water. And apparently yesterday when I was uh, running the additional two lines um, for the new ATO system, I must have broke one of the older lines. Uh, and so now that's sucking air uh, and isn't doing me a good job. So I've kind of got it uh, defined between this point here and where it makes an elbow over there. And I'll show you here in a second. And I guess ultimately the decision is do I cut and splice and try to utilize the uh, PVC pipe that I've got all that tubing inside of to uh, protect it from light, which in turn would cause algae growth? Or do I just take the easier way and um, use some cable ties and attach an entirely new line uh, to the outside of the PVC pipe? So here's the liter meter that draws water all the way from the 300 gallon container over on the other corner of the garage that holds 300 gallons of reverse osmosis water. So it's a very good source or supply of um, water to be used to top off the aquarium in the house. Now if you look here, this is the input line, the clear line there, and you can see it's sucking air, not sucking water. And I know this because A, you can see it, and B, this thing's been running all morning long. So you can see the liter meter is attempting to pull water. But for whatever reason, there's air in the line that it can't seem to get rid of. Now at first, I thought it might be that the liter meter wasn't really uh, able to... Uh, the rollers inside there at some point, uh, which roll across that yellow tubing, um, wear out and maybe it's a case where it's just no longer doing an adequate job and I probably should kind of disassemble that and take a look at it first before I get too carried away replacing line across the rest of the garage but it seems to me um, that if I'm seeing air in the line that there's a, a break in the line somewhere and I mean this just occurred as of yesterday when I had disassemble that entire PVC pipe line, I actually cut the PVC pipe. I uh, thought I'd cut it without cutting into the tubing, and maybe I didn't cut into the tubing, but in the process of pushing two additional lines through that PVC pipe, uh, I may have caused the hose to get kinked, which in turn would have caused it to crack or something. So I've kind of got, uh, I don't know exactly I haven't pinpointed exactly where the leak is at, but I've got it narrowed down to one particular area. GHL is widely recognized for the most reliable and future-proof aquarium controllers, dosers, and aquarium LED lighting on the market. Designed and manufactured in Germany, all GHL products are built with the highest quality and standards. The GHL Profilux 4 raises the bar to a whole new level. Featuring built-in Wi-Fi, the Profilux 4 can be connected to your network wirelessly and be monitored and controlled from anywhere. 
With integrated ports for temperature, pH, ORP, conductivity, you can monitor virtually anything. Built-in expansion ports and optional flow sensors allow the Profilux 4 to scale to meet the needs of even the most advanced aquarium installations without the need for additional add-on modules. The new GHL Doser 2.1 takes dosing to the extreme with integrated Wi-Fi for wireless management. It includes inputs for level sensors, a temperature probe, and an output for a magnetic stirrer making it an ideal solution for everything from dosing, automatic top-off, automated water changes, and even automated feeding. The GHL Mitras are the most powerful and flexible LEDs in their class. The 7206's built-in wireless control makes for fast and easy setup, while the GHL Light Composer allows users to easily set up their spectrum and lighting schedule. Six individual LED clusters provide the industry's best blending of LED channels while also providing the best spread. Nine channels of control allow you to tailor your lighting scheme to meet the needs of even the most difficult to keep corals while also bringing out colors in corals and fish that would otherwise remain unseen. All GHL products can be controlled via the GHL Control Center application as well as the My GHL Cloud Interface allowing for monitoring, control, and management from anywhere via an internet connection. The unique interface eliminates the need for coding while providing advanced programming functionality unrivaled by the competition. If you're looking for the best controllers, dosers, and lighting on the market, then GHL has a product to fit your needs. For more information, visit AquariumComputer.com. Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. Hello, my name is Jim Stein and I operate Aquarium Design and I offer aquarium sales, installation, supplies, livestock and aquarium maintenance in Thousand Oaks, Westlake Village, Agora Hills, Calabasas and Malibu, California. I specialize in custom aquariums ranging from freshwater, saltwater fish, living coral reef, and jellyfish display systems. I've been involved professionally and at many levels within the aquarium industry since 1987 and have been in business for myself since 1999. I've worked for many people and some for over 20 years now. My team can provide you with a unique range of aquarium systems ranging from rectangular in-wall to freestanding cylinders, bow fronts, and custom curved shapes. Additionally, we can offer a variety of aquascapes such as an artificial coral insert, coral skeleton decorations, custom-made branching rock structures, and themed environments such as this Jules Verne version of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. With today's technology in energy efficient DC water pumps and LED lighting, operating costs are much lower. We can automate many of the maintenance features such as water replenishment, water changes, lighting schedule, including moonlight lighting, and even your general daily feedings. I can even install an app on your smartphone that will allow you to monitor, to be notified, to control, and view your aquarium anywhere in the world. If you're looking for something truly unique, give me a call and let's discuss the possibilities of creating your aquatic dream. I'm knowledgeable, insured, and very reliable. My name is Jim Stein and you can reach me at 805-241-7140. I look forward to helping you achieve your aquatic dream. So in case you didn't completely understand, these two 300 gallon containers, the one on the right side holds 300 gallons of reverse osmosis water. The one on the left side holds 300 gallons of uh, mixed salt water. Uh, that uh, purification system over there in that corner of the garage 
actually sends water across the garage through the PVC pipe shield, as I'll call it, into this container here. Uh, this being part of the mechanism that senses when it's full and tells it to turn off. But that PVC pipe sneaks up behind that poster, runs back over there and across the garage, and that contains uh, these lines here. So this line here, which is coming from the filter system, and this line here, which is the one that the leader meter is sucking from, and then I ran these two additional lines uh, yesterday by disassembling that PVC pipe and shoving the hose through there. I would have thought it would have been the new tubing uh, that I might have kinked or something, but uh, somewhere along the lines uh, there's a break in the uh, suction line for the reverse osmosis. This being the line here, and I doubt if you can see it, but um, there's a little bu a bubble of uh, air inside that line right there, and it's just not moving at all, and that kind of tells me um, that this line is not able to suck, and so that there's a, a, an air leak somewhere in the uh, line, somewhere between there and way over there on the other side of the garage. And so we can see um, an air bubble moving back and forth uh, inside this line here, which is the suction point of the leader meter and that in turn passes its way back up there and over there is where the two lines go into the PVC pipe which passes up along through here it being the uh, uh, the yellowy one the white one is the line that fills um, the reservoir for um, uh, the tank inside the house now right over here is where that yellow line, and of course uh, that was the continuation of it. And so I'm going to show you a couple of things here that make me kind of decide where I think the uh, break in the line is at. Okay, so there's the two lines. One of them is the line that comes from the filter system going towards the 300 gallon container. Uh, the other one is the suction line that's going to the liter meter. Uh, that being the top of the two. And you can see that there's an air bubble that passes through there every once in a while. And so what that's telling me is as the leader meter is sucking water, which it can't, because it's sucking air. Um, so the break in the line is prior to this point. So this happens to be a splice point in the PVC pipe that's really less than two feet further down the line. And as you look, there are now four uh, of those uh, semi-rigid PVC water lines inside that PVC pipe. And the one, again, at the top uh, of the pitcher, or should I say to the uh, left side, you can still see that air bubble passing through there. So the, leak is a, the air leak is ahead of this point. So that means that it's somewhere going in that direction. So this is down at the corner where it makes this 90 degree bend. Uh, and there's the four lines. Now we're gonna sit here and wait a little while, but I don't see any air bubbles passing through any of those four lines. So I have to assume that the break in the line is after this point. Now, first of all, I'm really quite surprised there's a break in the line, especially the established lines because it was the new ones that got bent around and maybe kinked when they went in. Uh, the old lines were just kind of pushed out of the, the way or the new ones were slid alongside the old ones. But um, again, you don't see any air bubbles passing along this point. So obviously the leak has to occur after this point here. Now, the solution might be easily just to go in and cut the line uh, that's suspected to have uh, the break in it and then just splice in a new piece uh, That way everything can still remain inside the PVC pipe nicey nice um, I'm gonna step out here and you can see this is the line that comes from the other end down there 
down here to the elbow and then it passes along there which it then drops down to the water containers but see the problem here is I don't know which line it is I mean if the air bubble was passing through there I would know that it's ahead of this point uh, or I would know which line it is but I don't so it's a chance uh, and it's clear tubing and granted uh, two of them have water in it and two of them don't but I can't determine which it is so the clean solution would be to cut and splice um, the solution I'm trying to avoid which was the whole point of having the uh, a PVC enclosed pipe was exposing the uh, tubing to light uh, because we are above uh, the fish system that does have fluorescent lighting here um, so that it wouldn't grow any algae in there and at some point causing me to have to replace uh, the line but at this point it just might be a whole lot easier because believe me it was not easy trying to uh, push the two new airlines or two uh, water lines through that pipe so maybe I'll just take the lazy and easy path and just uh, cable tie uh, an entirely new line with no splices uh, along the pipe here and uh, I guess we'll deal with algae growth as it occurs okay so we ran the new line uh, the old line is coiled up off to the side uh, we snuck it behind the poster uh, it runs up along the side of the pipe and uh, across the uh, rafters in the garage. Not as neat or as clean as I would uh, had originally started out. And I didn't have cable ties that were big enough, so I've had to uh, use a few other things so it's definitely not as neat as it was and it's unfortunate that uh, that occurred and again I'm still surprised but let's hope that the new lines uh, that I did run uh, have no issues and um, that those will work out well for that uh, that new line is now coiled up and attached to the leader meter uh, it only had to run uh, for maybe two minutes before it had replenished the water in the tank in the house and uh, it had done its thing but uh, at least it's back to doing what it's supposed to do which is things that I don't have to do and that is replenish water in the tank in the house so there we go uh, okay so it's now time to get involved in the installation of the apex I want to uh, show you something here So that's the display module for the Apex on the reef tank in the house. And that being the Apex brain, uh, which controls the tank with all of its different components. And we have already run a line out into the garage, which in turn uh, currently allows me the ability to um, monitor there's a PM2 module there which allows me to monitor uh, temperature and conductivity in this little frag tank here uh, there's a line that runs over here to another PM2 module uh, that allows me to monitor the salinity and temperature in the fish system at some point I suspect I will put the invertebrate holding system on the apex as well but for now we're going to install um, an EB8 energy bar which will allow operation and controlling of power uh, for different components down here as well as monitoring pH conductivity and temperature in this tank and um, We'll uh, ultimately be able to do ATO, uh, automatic top off there, as well as ATO in this tank as well. So, without further ado, let's get to work. <laughs> 